I think the most challenging uh, hurdle to overcome when I was a midshipman was transitioning from being a high school student to being a member of the armed services. It's leaving one life behind, but it's carrying another mantle and becoming a part of a larger organization. And I would say that that's probably the most rewarding also. If I had known how historic it was to be in the first class of women to be admitted to the U.S. Naval Academy, I think I would have collected more items, kept more notes, but I treasured so many things in my heart of just the experiences I went through. It was very difficult. It was very isolating. Well, when you met an individual, you never knew how they were going to accept you or if they were going to accept you at all. You never knew if they liked women at the academy or they didn't like women at the academy or they didn't really care or they might want to take you out. And so you were just, it was exhausting because you were always on guard. You just, you just never knew and you never knew where the next mean statement was going to come from. Our nation was in a period of real change. Um, the Equal Rights Amendment was being debated. The Navy was in a lawsuit over whether or not women could go to sea. To say there were people that resisted and verbalized it would be an understatement. We had been brought to the Naval Academy to be trained as combat leaders, and we could not serve in that capacity. And so we didn't have a lot of credibility with our classmates or alumni or faculty even, or the leadership. And so I think the hardest thing for us was just countering that argument is, why are you here? You're taking the space of somebody who, who could be serving in combat when you can't. And that was, that was a really difficult argument to, to have with someone. We didn't have a lot of women to depend on. We didn't have a lot of mentors or role models. So there was nothing to kind of base your experience on. Was it good? Was it bad? Were you getting treated any differently? We really never got together in a very large group, or if it was, it probably wasn't um, taken in a positive fashion, or we felt a little bit insecure about having all the women together because we wanted to just blend in. When we were midshipmen and we went on the pertermit cruise during our second class summer, we were down in Norfolk and we were going on surface ships and we were told we were going to have to go on a destroyer tender which we had already toured as women numerous times and the male midshipmen were told they were going to get to go on a destroyer to see a missile shoot for the day. And we were furious because we wanted to go out on the destroyer with the men. And we went to the commander in charge and he said, hey, you know, women aren't allowed on combatants. We can't let you go out there. We said, no, but it's only for the day. And he said, hey, what if we went to war that day? We'd have to bring the ship back in and we'd have to let you off. And we were like, what? So we went on the destroyer tender and we got done early and we, we decided, hey, let's go down to the pier and meet the guys when their ship comes in. So we were there and the ship pulls in and they put the brow over and we're looking and there's some little uniformed people coming off the ship and we're like, who is that? And the closer they got, we realized it was a dozen 10 year old Cub Scouts that had been allowed to go out for the missile shoot, but we women who were being trained as combat leaders had not been allowed to go out on that ship that day. So that was, um, I think that, that pretty much tells the story of how far we've come as, as women in the Navy and the Marine Corps. To the women of the class of 80, 81, 82, 83, I say this and I bow down in homage because they had a really tough road to hoe. The things that I read about what they went through and from speaking with them. And in general, they're an extraordinarily positive group of women and they are achievers. We all know that in order to face adversity, you need courage, but I truly believe that you also need boldness. And I think that the women in the original classes at the Naval Academy taught us that. You know, they had the courage to be pioneers, but they also had the boldness to come in, um, establish themselves, and perform at a level equal to their peers. When I look back with 39 years of hindsight and the experiences I've had, we were all going through a challenging time and we were here to be developed morally, mentally and physically to serve as officers in the Navy and Marine Corps. Whether you were male or female, yeah, we had to have a little bit tougher skin and some of it was not quite as fun and we had funny looking uniforms because the Navy didn't even have khakis for women or summer whites. 
the experiences that we went through. I think that it was very hard for the first classes to go through. It takes a while to push the envelope a little farther, a little farther each time to say, yes, women can serve in total integration in the Navy. In the early 90s, when those of us that went into aviation, um, particularly fighter aviation, a lot of people thought the world was going to end. The sky was going to fall, fall down. I mean, I remember watching testimony on Capitol Hill. Women can't pull jeans. And we can. We've demonstrated that over years, that not only can we do the job, we can do it well, we can do it as well and serve our country just as equally as anyone else. Historically, it's really important to see the growth over the last 40 years. It, it seems like forever probably to the younger women, but for someone like me in those middle classes, to see the progress from right before I was here at the Naval Academy, when I went here myself and then to see the women now, it's tremendous progress. The midshipmen now, many of them have mothers who graduated, and that was something you never heard when I attended as a midshipman. It was always, oh, are you a legacy? Who was your father? All three of my children have actually graduated from the Naval Academy, but to have my daughter, who had no interest in the Academy, go to summer seminar and she said, Mom, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing this for you. I know the stories and I know how hard it is and I know things are better, but they're not perfect. But this is what I want to do. I am Lieutenant Allison Orr. Uh, I'm class of 2010. And my mom is Sharon Disher. She was class of 1980. Talking with my mom about her experience at the Academy, <laughs> it's changed a lot. I would say the best example that I could put out there is that for Herndon, that's such a huge accomplishment for the plebe class. And for her, Herndon, they were pulling women down. For my Herndon year, they were pushing us up. I mean, to me, that speaks volumes of just the difference and how just the, the overall view of women at the Academy has just changed over such a short period of time, really. Um, it's more of like, what can everybody do now as a team? Uh, how can we just make it a team effort, not so much just, you know, women and men, so. And it really is making our country stronger. So it's really nice to see that change and that growth. For me to be able to blaze the trail for so many other wonderful, wonderful female midshipmen who have come after us, it just makes what we went through worth it. The best part of going to the U.S. Naval Academy, of course, was the education and the career afterwards, I probably wouldn't have had that determination if I hadn't started here. A career in the Navy, flying helicopters, commanding a Naval Air Station, commanding a squadron, opportunities that were just beyond imagination for a young girl from Iowa. Their stories are amazing, and it really makes me appreciate what they did, and I think the young midshipmen need to meet and hear their stories as well. I want to keep pointing out to them and let them know that, hey, we're the bow wave of some of the opportunities that they opened up. In many ways, we're still opening doors. They're going to open more doors with the combat exclusion law finally being repealed. It's a continuous process. It has not been that long. It's still continuing and they're going to be a key part of it. The sky is, is truly the limit for them now and I think that's really exciting.